Dude, look at this wave. We're about to get hit by this wave. So Polar Pro recently reached out to us and they told us that they wanted to sponsor a video with their new variable neutral density filter. But this isn't just any variable neutral density. This is the Peter McKinnon edition variable neutral density filter. Why don't I have my own signature series filter? I don't know why I have a ton of YouTube subscribers. He can't possibly have more than me, right? Okay, he's got a lot more than us, so good job, Polar Pro. Let's open this thing up and see what it looks like. I have to say, this is the fanciest box I have ever seen, not just with filters, but probably anything photography related. I've never seen anything so nice. And uh, the inside does not disappoint either. We have a metal case, pretty fancy. Laser etched foam inside here. Incredible packaging. Let's check out the filter itself. So I don't know if you can see this, but as you twist it, it gets darker and brighter. This can cut down light entering your camera. It gives you a lot more options when you talk about exposing a correct shot in photo or video. This is not the most expensive filter on the market, but at $250, it's certainly not the cheapest. You can go online and find filters for 50 bucks, but I have to tell you, I've tried a lot of them and many of them suffer from pretty serious problems that make them almost worthless. When you buy a cheap neutral density filter, the first thing that you'll notice is they usually spin forever, so there's not a hard stop. On this filter, I can only turn it this far. You can actually hear it stopping. You'll also notice that there are numbers on this filter that correspond to the stops of light. With the cheaper filters, they spin forever. You just have to guess how much light you're stopping down. And the big problem with the cheap filters is they're not accurate. They might be one or two stops brighter on the edges than the middle or the upper left versus the bottom right. And when you're trying to get an even exposure overall, they just don't work. So I use variable neutral density filters for both video and stills. Let's first start with video. Let's head outside and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now this happens to be the Panasonic GH5. We're doing almost all of our videos with this camera. As you can tell, this is a very small lens, even though this is a 2.8 lens, and it has a much smaller front thread size. This is an 82 millimeter filter, but this lens is a 58 millimeter front element. We specifically asked for the largest filter we could because we knew we wanted to use it on multiple cameras and lenses. We can fit this natively on our Tamron 2470 that we use with our Nikon full frame system, but for all of our other cameras and lenses, we buy step up or step down rings like this, and I can simply screw this on the front, and then this much smaller lens will work with any of the filters that we already own. This is gonna save you a ton of money because this filter is 250 bucks, this little ring only costs 30. So let's talk a little bit about shutter speed. When it comes to still photography, shutter speed may not be that big of a deal. If your shutter speed is fast enough to get a sharp image, that's all you really care about. But when it comes to video, most videographers believe that shooting around 1 60th of a second creates the most realistic looking footage, especially if you're shooting at 24 frames per second. Take a look at this footage side by side. The one on the left was shot at 1 60th of a second, the one on the right was shot around 1 400th of a second. You can tell it just looks a lot more jittery when you shoot with a fast shutter speed. The reason for this is you're not able to get the blur in between each frame if you're panning the camera or your subject is moving. And so if we freeze one of these frames, you can see one has some motion blur and the other does not. For this reason, a lot of videographers like shooting at exactly 1 60th of a second and they don't ever want to change that. Now we have a couple more settings that we can change. But when it comes to ISO, we want the native ISO or the lowest ISO for this camera to get the cleanest possible image. And then when we talk about our aperture, that's going to completely change the way our image looks. A wider aperture will give a shallower depth of field and a smaller aperture will give us a deeper depth of field. But what happens if you wanna shoot with a shallow depth of field outside in the middle of the day, like right now? You're going to be forced to use some sort of neutral density filter. Now. A lot of videographers use standard neutral density filters, but the problem with that is you are constantly pulling them on and off to get the perfect one for your shot. If the light's gonna be constantly changing, it's going to be a huge pain in the butt to constantly be swapping these out. I love the fact that I have three filters in one with this and I can simply 
turn this knob and get a perfect exposure. And if the sun goes behind a cloud, I can turn this and change it. Or if it gets a little bit brighter, I can easily darken it up. So if you're still confused as to what I'm saying, come over here, let me shoot some rocks in the ocean and let me show you what I mean. So right now I am shooting at 2.8, 160th of a second, ISO 100. As you can tell, this is ridiculously overexposed. Let's go ahead and throw this filter on and see if we can get a correct exposure. So with the filter, right now I have it set to two stops of neutral density. It's still overexposed. Let's move up to three stops. This looks like a correct exposure. Maybe it's still a little bright in the sky. We can go up to four stops. And you can imagine if the sun was a little bit higher now, we probably would need even a little bit more than this. But at four stops of neutral density, I can get a perfect exposure while I continue to shoot at 1 60th of a second. Now this isn't the best example because I don't have to be shooting at 2.8 here. I'm shooting a pretty far off landscape image. I would probably want a deeper depth of field and I could stop all the way down to F22 if I wanted. But imagine if I was shooting a person in front of this and I really like that shallow depth of field, having a filter like this on my camera gives me options. Now what you're paying for with an expensive filter like this is the fact that it's going to give you accurate neutral density. It's not going to be darker in the upper left than it is in the bottom right. And it's also not going to add a color cast. All the colors look perfect, but it's also an even exposure all the way across the frame. So it's pretty obvious why I love this for video, but I know the majority of people watching this are still photographers. So let's take this filter off of the GH5. Let's put it on our Nikon D850. And let's see if we can come up with something interesting to shoot. I see some amazing rocks over here. It looks like we might have to start doing some climbing, but let's see if we can find an interesting composition before sunset. So we've been walking around the top of this cliff here, and maybe this is a path. Let's see if we can get down there. This looks amazing. I'm going to keep climbing down these rocks a little bit and see if I can get a long exposure of this water and all the turbulence with this filter. Now I'm going to try to find some sort of foreground element. If I can't, I may have to get in the water, but I think having a filter like this is perfect for this situation because I plan on shooting all the way through sunset. And as it gets darker, I'm probably going to use less and less neutral density. So we're about 30 minutes away from total sunset, but we are totally in shade here. There's, there's no sunlight hitting this foreground at all. And even with me shooting at ISO 100, F22, that's the most stop down we can do, the absolute slowest shutter speed that I can get on this scene is one tenth of a second, which is not slow enough at all to get the look that I want. You're going to have to have some sort of neutral density filter for this shot. Now Polar Pro told us that we can do anything we want with this filter, just make a cool video. I just don't want to destroy my gear also. So I keep getting shots that look good to me, and then I keep moving forward and changing my composition a little bit, and then I like the next shot even better. This is my favorite so far. All you 500px copycats out there, you're gonna be trying to find my geo tag of this image. You're never gonna find it. This is my spot. I'm coining this location. Now this is a perfect example of when you have to have neutral density if you wanna make this shot. It looks so boring without the blurry water. It looks like a snapshot but the second you take a long exposure, it looks fantastic. Now, one thing I'm doing just to make sure there's the least amount of camera shake possible is I am using the self timer mode. We've already got shake being introduced with these waves coming in and out. I don't wanna have any camera shake from my finger. So I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna shoot. It's gonna start beeping. While it's counting down, I'm just going to be holding this tripod down. And now it's taking a five second exposure. Woo! Let's see what these look like. It looks nice. It looks nice. So what I'm trying to do here is get some interesting foreground elements. We have these rocks and this algae or whatever this is right down here. I'm putting that in the bottom of my shot. I'm getting really nice looking soft water that's kind of spreading out in between all of these little rocks here. And then that is leading the eye into these beautiful large boulders in the background. In my last five second exposure, because the waves are starting to churn up a lot, I feel like five seconds is actually too long. 
which allows me to open up my aperture a little bit and shoot at a more optimum aperture. If I can shoot around f8 or f11 with this lens, I'm going to get an even sharper exposure. This is exactly why my favorite filter is a variable neutral density filter. Can you imagine if I had to change filters out? Here we go, more waves. It wouldn't work. I got really lucky with the clouds. I mean, look how beautiful this looks. We have incredible color right now. It's also not that contrasty. I was expecting to have a much brighter sky with direct sunlight hitting the clouds and then nothing hitting the foreground. But I have to say, this looks amazing. Obviously, I'm going to have to pull back a lot of the shadows when we get into post, but this is looking really good right out of camera. So normally, if you're shooting something like a waterfall, you're getting very predictable water movement. You can kind of get one shot, and as long as the light on the scene looks good, you've got the shot. You can go ahead and leave. What I'm running into here, though, is because the waves are so different, I can shoot two images back to back with the exact same shutter speed, and one might look pretty interesting where another one looks too chaotic. There's too much going on. So I think for a shot like this, you may want to find that perfect shutter speed and then just shoot for a while and try to find that perfect movement of water in each spot. You could even composite a few of these shots together. If you get the right side looking good and then the left side looking good on another shot, combine those together to create the perfect image. I've never been so excited about a landscape picture. Usually I'm kind of over landscapes because I feel like everybody just takes pictures of the exact same thing, but I feel like this is the first time this has ever been photographed. It's probably not true, but that's a lie I'm telling myself. There's a chance I'm going to destroy the camera, my phone, the microphone, the tripod, the Polar Pro filter, and my ego, but I gotta get this shot. This looks so crazy. Incredible, incredible. So it's starting to get a lot darker out here now. This is when I'm using the variable neutral density filter. I'm starting to turn it. I've gone from five stops to four stops. Now I'm on three stops. This is allowing me to shoot at my optimal f-stop, which is around f8 on this lens. All right, let's see what this exposure looks like. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. All right, so we've just gotten back to the studio. I've had time to play with these files, and I think I came away with two really good looking shots. I had so much fun out there shooting. It's really been a long time since I've taken a landscape photograph and had that much fun. Big thanks to Polar Pro for sponsoring this video. And if you guys are interested in a high quality variable neutral density filter, check this out. It literally just came out today. Remember the one that we were using was the two to five stop version. If you're looking for a little bit more neutral density, they also make a six to nine stop version as well. For more free content like this every single day, head over to fstoppers.com. And if you're interested in landscape photography or other genres of photography, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. We've teamed up with many famous photographers, including Elia Licardi to create the Photographing the World series. We travel around the world with them and photograph many of the most beautiful landscapes and cityscapes. If you like this video, you're going to love that.